day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless. Love you. Hey everybody, I'm glad you're back. This is part C for what we did on the 12th of April during the Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, like for some of you call it Easter uh, Sunday. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Main thing is we all know that we're worshiping, honoring, remembering what Jesus Christ did down on that cross and raising, rising up on the third day. And the fact is that that gives us, <laughs> gives give us through our faith that we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. And also the blood that was spilled on that cross was the blood that covers, wash away our sins and give us that grace to keep growing in the things of God, connecting us back to God, though not being spiritually dead, but spiritually alive. And, and the part C focus on the Mary uh, and the disciples, but Mary going to the uh, tomb and, and finding that it was open and found out that she met Jesus at that tomb. And she was the first one to preach the gospel to say he's alive, going back to the disciples and say he's alive. And the disciples ran to the tomb and and when they got there, there was nobody there. Mary stayed around and angels showed up because she stayed. And, and what I want to do to just close out on this is just the power of the mothers, the, the, the woman in the gospel and in our life today. It was Mary Magdalene who with Mary, the mother of Jesus, that stayed at that cross until Jesus died. They watched where he was put into the tomb. And after the Sabbath day was over, they went to go and finish doing the burial preparation as far as putting on the, 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 the fragrance that they used for burial. But they found it was not there. But the point was that I want you to know, and ladies, I'm just telling you right now, you are powerful. Mary Magdalene was one of the people that walked with Jesus and financed the ministry or helped finance the ministry. Uh, that means she was a very wealthy woman. And uh, it's, it's, it's just so dynamic to see how the power that, that the, the females bring to the gospel. You know, it's, the thing about it is we sit there and say what Eve did. Well, I like when the introduction of bringing in Christ, how the woman, opposed to Eve, the woman, women, played a major role in our salvation. Mary carried our Savior. And she stayed with him until the end. We, 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 we see Mary Magdalene. Huh? I mean, and then there's this, this powerful female throughout the, throughout the gospel, throughout the Bible, that I just want to say we honor our ladies. We appreciate what you do. You are powerful. You the ones that even with for some of us going through slavery, it was the it was the only thing that kept a family or, or gave some type of semblance of a family was the mother. And to bring it back when it when we were freedom, it was the fact is was that the, the main thing that brought back a semblance of a family was the mother. Mother of those children, mother of the husband. I mean the wife of the husband. But the bottom line is you have played a major role, all of you. Whether you're black, white, any color, you are powerful. You bring in children under, under pain, birth pain, but you bring forth life and then you nurture that life all the way. And it's recognized in the Bible. Even the lady that, 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 that weeped that Jesus, they put ornament on, 
uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus said, when this gospel preached, remember her as a memorial of what she did as she prepared for my burial. Mm. I thank you. And this segment is basically showing the power of the first person who preached the gospel. And found out later that she was being identified as an apostle. Uh, it was the Catholic Church sanctified her. Mm. Y'all powerful. I just want to let you know that. So I'm leaving that to you. You are powerful. <laughs> my mama was powerful. My sisters are powerful. Ladies are powerful. My wife is powerful. Thank y'all to keep this gospel going. We appreciate you. All right. So I hope you enjoy part C. And we look forward to you for the uh, upcoming Sunday. God bless. Today is the 17th of April. Amen. I'll see you later. Yeah. Because even young people now, they find out, like you said, they're starting to get it too. Because uh, you even had the Florida gov the governor of Florida sitting there saying, well, it has, it's not affecting young people. Well, it is. It is. Yep. They had to sit well, there. Huh? If you call on the name of the Lord, man, you, can, you shall be saved. That's, what That's it. Will he save you from this virus? The chances of you not being saved, I mean, being a, a, a greater than you dying. Yes. It, it, it is, it is, people are really being healed of this thing. I say now in this hour, regardless of what your circumstances, your belief system might be at this point, Jesus healed for that wouldn't say it. it was a good time for him to introduce you, for you to introduce yourself to him because it, this, we, he, the, the medical industry really can't help me. <laughs> I know it. I know <laughs> it. They struggle. Well, the way they're struggling to, to to try to catch up and get ahead of the thing because we fell behind, you know. And uh, we as a country didn't take this as serious as we should have, and now we're getting the impact. This, you know, hopefully we'll start seeing the the fruits of our taking more taking us more serious in a few more weeks. But what we're seeing now is the lack of response in the early stages. You know what I mean? And that's man. Yeah. But, but the one thing we remind, I, I remind myself of is that Jesus is never in a response mode. The Lord God knew this was coming before it ever hit. So he he's did. not acting as a, a you know a responder. He was in the mission in the midst of it all the time. Yeah. The other thing that I know is that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is a healer. Yes, sir. Because I've experienced he's a deliverer. He, 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 he's a he, he's a savior. These things Amen. we have testimony of. These yes, things we have witnessed. So I know he can. He he, he healed cancer in my sight. Yes, sir. He delivered me from alcohol. Come on, man. Other crazy. So he is able to heal Corona. And so when people are getting infected with this stuff, and actually it is time for us to call on the name of the Lord. And yeah. ask him to heal us. Yes, sir. It's yes, sir. Power. Call Jesus. Call on Jesus. If you know you infected, you ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah. Call on him and see what he does. And now what he said. And now what he said. If my people call by my name. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and Pastor, not everybody that Jesus Christ healed was saved or got saved. I think some of them went off back in that direction, but it did not prevent him from proving to them who he was. Right. When they rejected him, they rejected him with full knowledge. Yes. Now, is everybody going to get saved? And my prayer is that they accept the healing that he provides to them and then just follow him with all their lives. And just like you said, you have everything you have follow this man. This man just saved your life. What you got to reserve for? That's my encouragement. And I'm praying that that is happening that they are being healed by Jesus himself. And that when we go out and preach this gospel, that they would turn their lives over to him solely and only. The opportunity is there. But I, I encourage everybody, I don't care if you're a believer, Muslim, or whatever you believe, believe Jesus. Believe that Jesus will heal you. Ask him. Ask him, at least ask him to heal you and see what he does. Amen. Amen. There is hope Amen. out there. And the hope is Jesus. Jesus is hope for the whole world. He died for everybody. Yes, he didn't die for Christians. We weren't Christians. <laughs> we were Jesus. <laughs> exactly. And he died for them while they were yet in their sin. And he's dying for them while they're yet in their sin. He died for them too. 
Call on the name of Jesus and see what happens. Call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Now I do want to. So I do want to do so. We, so we can close out a little bit here. Is uh, I put in John twenty. Just let Patty, uh, Brother Jack. That's where we let people know about the resurrection. Uh, I'll go ahead and do this one. Uh, this is John chapter twenty, starting in verse one. It's talking about the resurrection, and we want to talk about what happened. Amen. Because we already saw the foreshadowing occurred back. Thousands of years before Jesus showed up. Preach, man. And now we and now we we're thousands of years after that. But this is what happened on that on that on that Sunday morning. <laughs> Come on now. It's my people. Come on now. Humble. That's the key. Humble. And this this nation has must humble itself before the Lord. Not before man. Not before some other country. But to him. That's the Amen, key. Man. Amen. So it says right Amen. here on the John chapter 20, verse 1, it said the first day of the week, that means Sunday, right? Because 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 right. the seventh is Sabbath on the Sabbath day, as far as the Jewish people are concerned. So on the first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early, Brother Jackson. And when it, and when it was yet dark. Elder, that mean that's that that mean it won't sunrise. Amen, it, it was dark when they went out to the tomb. And and, and unto the sepulcher. And and see the stone, look, the stone was already taken away from the sepulcher, and that's before sunrise. That Amen. mean what Amen. happened happened on Saturday night. Amen. Because that's how they count it, right? They count it by sunset to sun, sunrise to sunset, right? That's how their days go. So that that that's seventh, so he came after the Sabbath, after the Sabbath day, he rose. So he came, he rose at night. Then she, and that's another thing too. Let's talk about Mary Magdalene, Elder. One of the things is that the the I was reading up on the stories, and and this is for everybody else to to get here. We gotta give. The woman of this country, the woman of this world, we're gonna to have to elevate them. And the fact is that the first one to preach the gospel, the the, the, the people who stayed with Jesus even in the middle in the Garden of Gethsemane, because the people who ran were the men. But but the, 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 those those women were with him, brother Jackson. And, and, and one of those women that was called Mary Magdalene. And the reason I want to sit there and say that and make sure everybody, I've heard elders do call them Mary Magdalene uh, a prostitute. You know? Yeah. And, and and they said, and when I did my research on it, elders, I want you to catch this. And Brother Jackson, I did my research on this. And and I thought Magdala means where prostitutes were. However, elder, Magdala is a place where they process the fish. What that do I know? processed fish, the fish that was like a fishing. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. It was not known for being a place of prostitutes. It was a place where they processed fish, and on top of that, they tried to tie Mary with Mary Bethany. They tried to tie, tie uh, Mary Magdalene with with the woman that that came into Jesus and 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 wiped his feet, wiped the. Uh, he washed his feet with her tears and her hair. And, and that particular woman, they said, was a bad woman, had a bad reputation. They tried to make that Mary Magdalene, but that wasn't Mary Magdalene. Uh, and even it wasn't the Mary of Lazarus' sister. Lazarus' sister was from Bethany. And they identified her as Beth from Bethany. Just like they identified Mag Magdalene from Magdala. They, they said, this is where she's from. That woman that came in and washed Jesus' feet was a woman that had a bad name, a bad reputation. That's a different person. So this woman, on top of that, was one of the people that financed Jesus' ministry. Mm -hmm. And you look at the scripture, she was one of the, she was, it was several females that financed that ministry. In other words, they had wealth, is what I'm trying to say. 
And on top of this, this woman was at the cross of Jesus' mm -hmm. crucifixion. Yep. This woman was with Jesus when he was doing his ministry. And, and, and I suspect she was in the garden with everybody else. And I can tell you that one thing is, she was the first one for some other female. It was the females that went to the tomb. Yep. And 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 look to to look for Jesus, huh? Yep. And it was a female. <laughs> yeah, it was a female, brother Jackson, that they gave the first gospel to say yep. he's alive. He's risen. Huh? He is risen. And that's this is Mary Magdalene. And so therefore, some people said that tradition was trying to put her down, Elder, because they didn't want to get the woman some prominence. And, and oh, yeah. you know, it took years before now the Catholic at least call her a saint. Yes. You know, but for yeah. years we sit yeah. there and try to give this woman a bad name. She, they said to cast out seven demons from her. Well, right. you know, well, you know, some of the time when they said demons, they called spiritual infirmities. In other words, they were sick, and they call that, you know, when they cast some of those out, there's spirits, sick, well, spirits, demons, they bring in sickness. You know, mm -hmm. so it wasn't yep. saying she was a prostitute. You know, <laughs> it was just somebody that also was healed by Jesus. Okay, so so she came and said, and said, when is your dark? And sees the stone taken away from the sepulchre, because she runs. Look at that. She runs. And comes to P Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved. They weren't at the sepulchre, because she was. <laughs> and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter, therefore, went forth, and that other disciple, which is John, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down, looking in, saw the linen cloth lying, Elder, yet went he not in. Now, John didn't even go into the. You know, John the one said, I'm the disciple with the Jesus love. <laughs> he, looks into, he looks into the tomb. And he, he didn't go no further. <laughs> Brad Jackson, I don't know if you, you know what I'm saying, Brad Jackson. He, 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 didn't, he looked at that and said, oh, well, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. hey, now, Peter, come, now you got to give Peter some credit. Now, Peter, Peter probably desperately was serious, though. The fact is, he didn't want to deny Jesus openly three times, right? Then come yeah, Simon right. Peter followed him and went into the sepulchre. See the linen cloth lie in the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in the place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple. Now John finally came in. When they, when they first come to the sepulchre, and he saw and John believed. Oh, John, well, you know, once he finally came into the sepulchre, he did say, oh, yeah. He's he's alive. <laughs> he's alive. But he he said, but he believed, right? He believed something, didn't he? Didn't tell you exactly what he believed, but we know what he would believe. Oh, he rose. He rose. All right. But it's interesting because John, the only one accepted that, at least in his narrative, right? Because because what what do you think they believe in? Out there? I don't see nothing out there he could have believed in except for the Jesus yeah. role. Yeah, he, because he told, he told me he was gonna rise from the dead, but they didn't believe it. Yeah, they didn't believe it. And John, so John is in the game. He's the first one that believed it. He ain't said nothing though. <laughs> you know that? He ain't said nothing. Yeah, he, he's peeping. He's peeping in. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Come on now. <laughs> he was scared to go. He's with people around the corner. <laughs> hey, hey, Elder. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna. I gotta run and get my uh, cord for my power cord for this phone right quick. Uh, could you could you uh, finish reading that up? Just read that last one for me, okay? I gotta get my no. cord. I gotta get my power cord, brother Jacks. I'll right back. Okay, you started at twenty nine. Yeah, well, I left for the part where uh, he believed. Uh huh. Okay. And, and, and John twenty nine, and for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. 
And then the disciples went away again into their own home. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. It basically saying the same thing you were saying was that, uh, you know, Mary came. I mean, when they went home, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. And <laughs> yeah. Mary stood at the sepulchre weeping and asked, she, she wept. This is in John, uh, John 10, 11, 19, 11. Yeah, because. She wept. Yeah. She stooped down and she looked into the sepulchre. Yeah. Now, the thing about it, the only, the only one I wanted to get out of there was the fact that John was the only one to believe, though. Because as of yet, even though Jesus, this is interesting, Brother Jackson, even though Jesus told them, remember that? He told them yes. he was going to pass away and yes. come rise again. Because Peter was the one that said, this ain't going to happen, Lord. This ain't going to happen. Remember that? Yes. But right. interesting right here said, John believed. I just want to make sure you capture. He believed. And what he believed in was Jesus, what he said. Because they said right here, as of yet in verse 9, they knew not the scripture. That he must yeah. rise again from the dead. They yeah. didn't know the scripture, but you know he told them that that was going to happen. Ain't it? Mm -hmm. He told them. Yeah. And then, then, look, then the disciples went away again to, unto their own homes. Yep. Yeah. Jesus appeared to, this is the title right there. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. This is the next title. Uh, verse 11. But Mary stood without a receptacle weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the receptacle. Verse 12. And says, look, that's interesting. After they went home, <laughs> the disciples, the woman, the woman stayed. And when she stayed, the manifestation of angels showed up and seeing two angels in white white city now you know they probably because the other part of the ranch <laughs> a woman said no nah, i ain't running wait a minute what's going on here i see these two angels you know what i mean so, some of us some of us are freak out on the angels i i probably would too so who knows god bless you. hallelujah <laughs> sitting in white linen oh and the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Verse 13. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. I know not where they had laid him. Now, see, see, because she's still believing. You can see she still believed that he was dead, Elder. Because all she said is they took his body, basically, and we don't know where they put it at. Right, right. So the only person that walked away believing something was John. I just want to throw that perspective in there, right? Yep. And when right. she had thus said, she turned her back herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus, Elder. How's that? You know, in the movie, John, uh, uh, Brother Jackson, they had him stooping down with his back turned to her. And as if he was doing something in the garden. That's how that's how the, the, the movie played it. But apparently she he I guess he was looking right at her, Elder. But she didn't know who he right. was. Right. right? And he said, and Jesus said unto him, Why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She's supposing to be the gardener said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Now, now, Elder, I want to throw some little pieces at you. The only reason I'm throwing that is everybody else called her Mary Magdalene or Mary from Magdala. And in just in case Brother Jackson was trying to make it seem like she was a bad woman, guess what? Jesus said, Mary. You understand what I'm saying, Brother Jackson? I'm saying is Amen. where everybody else was, if even if some people was trying to make it in the Bible that she had a bad reputation, Elder, when Jesus spoke to her, he called her just by her name. He didn't even put, he didn't put the fact of where she was from. Mm -hmm. 
It was a personal. You see what I'm saying? This he took. He didn't. It, it didn't matter. He was saying, "I'm giving her a status of somebody important because I'm calling her by her first name." In that society, they didn't like that. You know, remember they don't. So why are you talking to a woman? You know, hey, you talk to the men. Amen. She and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabona, which is to, to say bastard. You know? She she but but she first had to hear him call that personal relationship, Brother Jackson, which is Mary. That's what God wants a personal relationship of each every you know, everybody is what I want to throw in that particular scripture. And then verse 17. Jesus said to her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I send unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Now look at the bird daddy talking. Now see, that's Jesus talking anymore. Mary Magdalene, see, I didn't, but that's her name now. That's not from where she's from, right, Elder? That's just saying her name right there. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciple they had seen the Lord. And that he has spoken these things to her. And some of the gospel, Brother Jackson, they didn't believe what she said. They doubted. They doubted it. But verse 19, I want to throw this at y'all. Then we're going to wrap it up because we got Brother got Johnson, got a Brother uh, Jackson got a service at 10 o'clock. 19. Okay. Then the same, right. then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they hiding out of fear. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto him them his hands in his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, hey now y'all, elder, even so send I you. Amen. Brother Zach, that's what I'm, I'm reading this because I'm saying that's just, you know, saying we have a commission to go preach the gospel. Yes. Because we know we ain't talking about just the disciples because the disciples, elder, the disciples gone, right? They, they ain't here no more, right? Those twelve, are, those twelve, those, they, they, they gone. They, they up there with God. They up there with Jesus. So he's talking about us. He said, "As my Father has sent me, Brother Jackson." He says, "Even yes. so, I send you." Yes. Amen. You know, in the Baptist Amen. channel, they call, "Pick up the phone." He's calling you. <laughs> you ever heard that? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pick up the phone, brother. He calling you. <laughs> yeah, well, you like to stem you, right? <laughs> then send you go. <laughs> send me, Lord, amen. amen. And look at this, El El Johnson. Interesting. He said, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, "Receive ye the Holy Ghost." Amen, man. Whosoever sinners, ye remit. They are remitted unto them, and whosoever Amen. sin ye retain, they are retained. Yeah. That's interesting, ain't it? Yep. That's interesting. But if they receive, they that means they receive Jesus. That's the bottom line. That's what it means. You know what I mean? That's right. Now here's yep. one. This Amen. is a, this is one I thought was always interesting. The elder was, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Right. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Just like the world sometimes, just like someone else probably, <laughs> except I see, look at the Brother Jackson, except I see his hands, the prints of the nail, and put my finger into the prints of the nails. And thrust my hands into his side. Look at this, brother Jackson. He said, "I, I, I, I will not believe." Amen. Now, what do you think about that? Well, I can, I can understand how uh, he would uh, feel that way because 
it's such a phenomenal uh, a statement to try to say that hey, you know, he is alive after everything that they experienced out of that traumatic um, scenario that just took place. Um, and you know, him being the one that just for whatever reason, you know, he was out busy doing whatever it is he was doing, you know, for all of them to come back. And it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, a lot of people can tell you something, but unless you experience it for yourself, unless you see it for yourself, you just don't, you don't believe because it's just too fantastic a story. And I, I get that. And uh -huh. I, I, I could see myself being in his same situation. Right. Now, you know, it's funny though, but isn't it, isn't it, aren't you, you know, let's say put yourself in the same situation. You you were there when he walked on water. You 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 yes. you, you were there when he rose Lazarus from the dead. Yes, you, but you know we're all uh, <laughs> there's a spectrum, I think, as to uh, how we all come to believe in the Lord, which is also why Jesus said, you know, for those who have not seen it believe, you know, he says this later, but of course we don't know. But it's, but what, what this does for us is it explains that. It, we're all going to come to uh, believing Jesus and believing that his power and, and, and internalizing the fact that he is alive, that he's been resurrected by the God of the that, you know, we're all going to come to these in different ways. I don't, I don't, uh, and, and of course we're not doing this, but I, I, again, I can see how Thomas would be, you know, he's like the odd man out. He's like, look, I see him for myself. You can't tell me nothing. You know, and then, of course, of course, and all of a sudden, when he gets the throat, he can say he can't deny. And I think what that does is, is, is for all of us, for most of us who are, you know, easily, I guess we're quick to believe uh, some things, and but there are some others of us, it may take a little bit more effort. Uh, and, uh, and you know uh, that's what we that's And let's let's be honest. If it wasn't for the fact that uh, you know we have scripture, and then we have prophecy that has been fulfilled, many but still not believe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, go now, ahead. This is proof that that God gives. I mean, the Lord he spoke. He said when you talk to Peter, he said flesh and blood did not reveal to you. Come on now. But my Father in heaven. So one of the things I, I come to realize is that there is intellectually not enough information to cause us to believe in God. <laughs> but I think our, our understanding or our revelation of God comes through the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that reveals Himself to you. Yes, sir. And you will yeah. need to learn how, we, we won't learn our way to believe it. That's why when people read the Bible and come out and still not believe in Christ. You have to believe Him first, and then the rest of the stuff begins to make more sense. It, 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 when He reveals you, then the word is open to you to be revealed. It takes the Holy Ghost to really comfort, con to con convict the person or to convince the person that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. Much yeah. evidence, once that revelation is there, then there's much evidence to, you know, reinforce it. But if the revelation initially is the head, then yeah. the stuff that we see is not going to cause us to say Jesus is Lord. Right. You know? Right. You start talking to God long before knowing anything about him. I mean, I didn't know very much about him then when I started talking to him. Yes, yeah, sir. But uh, I learned a lot more after as we got to know each other. But uh, as I got to know him, but it was first a revelation. It was a revelation knowledge. It wasn't, it wasn't like I figured it out. You know, no, it was just he kind of showed up. He's yes. Like, hey, how you doing? Yes, sir. He <laughs> <laughs> just kind of went from there. Right. <laughs> and you know what, Brother Jackson is probably true, Brother Jackson. I, I agree with you in the sense too that that I think if it was another disciple that wasn't there, they probably would have said the same thing. Ain't it right oh, yeah. else? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the, only, the only reason the only reason they believe is because they were there when they showed up. <laughs> and, and the guy that they were trying to believe in, this God that they were they didn't believe in, was talking to him. Exactly. So, you know what? Like he looked at the wounds and said, "Oh, that's you." He never. He didn't even examine the wound. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 didn't, he didn't go over and like he put his hands on him. And said, from where he stood and where he, he, he saw. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, you know another thing, too. The guys, the, the 10 that were there, 
Uh, Brother Jackson, if you notice, he can, he told him two times, peace, peace, be t peace. He told him said peace. I said right. What is that? That what he said? Peace, right? He told him uh, where is it at? It was a verse before that. He told him peace be unto you. And he said that in verse nineteen. He also said in verse twenty one, peace be unto you. So where you th why do you think somebody got to say peace be unto you? Because they was excited. They, was <laughs> they, they were they were having issues, right? <laughs> All right, let you me know. go ahead. Let me go ahead and finish this up because my my video giving run out on me too. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. My, my phone gonna run out. It said okay, and then and then after eight days again, the disciples within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the door being shut and stood in the midst and said, "Peace be unto you." Then said he to Thomas. Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hands, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, like you said, Elder, my God, my Lord and my God. But Jesus Lord said this to all of us. Jesus said unto them, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. <laughs> Brother Jackson, he said, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet believe. Amen? Amen. 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 So that's what happened on Resurrection Sunday. And then after eight days later, that's when Jesus showed up to all the disciples. Hey, if this phone, if this computer cut off on you, you guys normally still in the session. I just probably need to go grab my computer <laughs> to come back up, okay? Because it's saying it's low. But let's do the communion real quick. But if I lose you, I lost you because the computer ran out of power. Amen? Amen. All right. All right, so Brother Jack, you go do your thing on that, the communion. Okay. And we got to remember that before all of this took place, uh, Jesus was with the disciples and had that in that upper room. And he, he had fellowship with them. And he wanted to give them the ceremonies so that not just for him, but for them, but for all of us in the future. Yes. Like whenever we did this particular ceremony, uh, that we would remember the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. Yes, sir. And what he did is he prayed, and he said that this is a representation of his body. To take that bread, bring it and eat it in remembrance of him. Take the bread and eat now. Amen. Amen. And afterwards, he, he took the cup. And I was us, this cup and the contents of this cup the purpose is his pure blood. And what we've got to understand is only God himself and the manifestation of his son Jesus Christ can handle the wrath of what God had put down. And we thank Jesus for obeying his God the Father. We thank Jesus for loving us when we were yet his enemies. And we now drink this in remembrance of him. Amen. 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 We know that Jesus is alive. I'm, I'm for the elder. When that revelation came upon me, I mean, it just intellectually, he's right. It, it blows your mind. You can't really contain it. The only way you can accept it, the only way you can really accept it is if the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Amen. 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 Well, I want y'all to enjoy your resurrection Sunday. And enjoy our fellowship with y'all. And I know we had a real good time in the first half. I just wanted to give some historical perspective on the second half. But God bless you. He's alive. Y'all be blessed. Have a good week. Amen. <laughs>